Hey, you keep this one rolling for a little bit while we introduce everything, but you can introduce us. Just hey, just lower the uh the the volume on it. There you go. There you go. Mm, that's key. Oh key. She got the phone. No thank you. I got it all. She messing with the bitch. All right, I think we ready. Yo, 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 what it do, what it do, man It's your boy Anwalk We here uh, for Table Talk Episode 9, boy Can't believe we already at You know, number 9 I got here my, my homie, my brother from another Yes, sir Peso, peso, peso What it do, man? What's poppin'? Yeah, so we, uh, we gonna uh, have some topics today I think uh, you could touch on You know Just kind of what you've been You know Going through in uh, the music industry um, yes. We got some uh, other events That was going on yesterday uh, We got Kanye That made an announcement um, We got the Glizzy Gladiator That we gonna talk about Oh my god And then uh, We gonna get into A couple other uh, Like You know Sports And we might play a game or two You know it all depends on how it goes, you know, uh, as we are, you know, still establishing this podcast and this network here at Unanimous. Facts. But uh, with that, uh, you know, with that being said, how you doing, man? 
Doing good, man. I'm doing excellent. Super blessed. Happy to be here, man. You know, thank you for allowing me to come on here and practice for uh for Jada's Red Table Talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. We, you know, we appreciate you. You know, especially how you working right now. You know, you're all over the place, man. You in uh, you're thank in you, LA. Man. You've been in LA for how long? Two years. Two years. Okay. Yes, sir. So how's that been? LA is everything that you hear about it, man. You know, it's just really been a personal mission for me. Just you know, changing the way I want to live, the way I want to go about things. Just being out there, learning new things about myself. That's really all it is for me. Like, shit really ain't changed. Like, I'm still doing GKFM oriented things. Still. Mm -hmm down with the same thing, the same ethics. You know, it's just in a, like up in the the uh, the difficulty level on a video game. Okay. It's just like when you done on All Pro, like Cincinnati is like All Pro. And now I'm just, I just wanted to go play on All Mad. Okay, okay. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good way to look about it. And I mean, it sounds like, you know, from what I'm hearing from what I'm seeing, you know, I watched you progress, you know, and it's it's crazy because not a lot of people get to watch people progress from the beginning to, you know, usually, well, hopefully, you know, to, you know, not necessarily rock star status, but to the goal that they're, you know, that right, they right, have right. envisioned. So it's cool that someone like me gets to watch that. Um but you know, just seeing yeah, you, you, you was know, there from the very, the very beginning. Oh yeah, you know, and just watching you now, you're taking that next step, which is a hard step for a lot of artists to take. You know, that that kind of move is pretty huge. You know, yeah. Uh, and you've pretty much normalized it because you're out there, and it's just you know, you come back and you're here, but you go back out there. You know, it's some people really don't know where you at because you moving just because you you move. Like you're everywhere at one time, which is a, a good thing, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I, I definitely give you props for that because uh, it's not something that's easy, especially even for someone like me because, you know, uh, you might have something going on here or you just got family here or just right, something right. that's holding you here. So for you to make that jump and say everything is good here, I could go and do my thing, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge in my book. And you know, for a lot of people, it's, it can be difficult because L.A. is a is is built around the socializing, man. You got to really, it's clicky. Yeah, you you kinda gotta, feels like you got to get out there and really, like, have your face and out there. And anybody that know me know I'm not I'm not that dude. But that's just a part of the challenge. That's, like, a part of the challenge. Like I said, personal reasons. I had to go challenge myself. Like, yeah. I have to learn how to, you know. Yeah, because you've been out and about around here. People know your face. Yeah, yeah. They know yeah. your music, you know. But it's it's so organic out here, man. You know, Cincinnati is so community-based. Yeah. It don't feel like I'm, like, I'm reaching for anything. In L.A., you kind of, you got to stick your arms out a little bit. You got to put out, you got to get out what you're going to put into it. You got to go. Yeah, I feel like, from. yeah, I feel like, you know, you can't just go out there and just go make music yeah, yeah, yeah. and just still oh, no. be you. Definitely you, not. you, you gotta, you know, you gotta start taking bigger risks. You gotta try to meet people. You gotta go to these. That's when it's important to go to events. You know, people try to say, you know, they, they press that here. How can I get in with things here? Go to events, go to that. Ah, nah, you really could just network on social media here. Yeah. There, you really got to get your ass out there, take your music with you. Definitely. You know what I mean? So it's still kind of old school how it used used to kind of be everywhere. But it's yeah, still yeah. it feels like it's still there. Like, L.A., you you were in New York for a little bit? No? I didn't live in New York, no. I've been in New York a few times, about three, four times. But Music related? Yeah. You know, I, Same way? I or? performed in Jersey. Uh, I just really went off the strength of... My homie Pink Sifu, our homie. Mm -hmm. you, really, I, I did a show out there and like I met some cats that's doing their thing in the music industry out there, but I ain't, I wasn't based in New York now. Okay, okay, okay. So, you know, what do you uh, what do you like about LA that's not even related to music, music wise? What's like one of the <laughs> very good things, if there's any? 
Oh, there's a lot of good things, you know. But what's the one what? thing that, like, it's just a luxury of having there that we don't hear? If I'm going to be, like, realistic, uh, L.A. is just a more pleasant, like, overall, it's just a more pleasant place to move around for me. Like, you can just get anywhere. And, like, Does it feel safer? It's a whole world. It. Or does it feel like people? It do kind of feel safer in a way. Is it like what about racism? Is it kind of deep out there? Was racism? Going on? It's out there. Racism everywhere. It's America. So yeah, but I mean, like in a sense of like you know, here in it's Cincinnati, different. it's here, pretty bad. Here, the racism is against from white people. Out there, you might have racism against white people, but it's more like it could be like. Cause the I know passive the si- aggressive type racism, yeah, 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 but yo, yeah, yeah. yo, because I know the systematic racism racism is everywhere, but just in a sense of it's gonna be. I'm just trying to get the feeling of like the in between space, you know, just like areas. Like, is it bad? You know, like there's areas here in Cincinnati we know like it's just it's racist. You know, it's yeah, really yeah. bad compared to other cities where it's not as bad but it's still bad you know in we LA, know it's everywhere but in la you're gonna meet racism if you're black you're gonna meet racism from the latino community point blank period okay all my racist experiences in la have been from mexicans and which is sad which is that don't make no type of sense it don't make sense at all yeah right? but that's just how it is out there you might experience racism from white people but it's gonna be the passive aggressive type it ain't gonna be yeah hardcore like, right 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 Cause they they fuck with you on a on a surface level. The white people really fuck with you aesthetically, cause that's like you cool to them out there. Mm-hmm. But the Mexicans is like nah, they they run up on you. With a lot face. of a lot of gentrification out there. Yeah, definitely a lot. Especially um, in Inglewood is not is becoming like not what you would typically think. Uh, I mean, I ain't really from there, so I can't speak on it too much. But yeah, like from as far as I understand, there's definitely a couple of neighborhoods that's getting like completely different than than what you used to see in the early '90s from South Central LA right. and like shit like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, you know, what about the industry out there? What what more or less? What about the scene as far as the music and hip hop? What is it? What is it like? Like, what's an everyday kind of routine for? someone that's not from LA that go that moves out there and is trying to, you know, maybe jump into a scene or, you know, get established out there. What what's what's going on? Is there is there something that everybody has to like kinda do? Is there, you know The thing about that to me is that that's still like a whole world within itself. Like here, like you kinda know what you gotta do. Like it's yeah. It's really one route. There is It's like a treasure and everybody really moved out world. there to just try to find it. It's a whole world, man. Like if I we got to I can't even sit here and tell you to like advice. It's just out there you can really just be yourself because it's so many lanes and you would you would do fine. You got to be yourself. It's like it's just, the underground out there is damn near would be the mainstream here, like, oh yeah, we, like I'm like out there kicking it with niggas who we used to like drive up the street listening to, like, yeah, and it's just they just it's just normal shit, right? It's just they out there, yeah, it's, they it's just different, stay out there, yeah, it's definitely different in here, you know. And I've seen, you know, there's been artists from here that have left, went to L.A., been successful, you know. So why don't we see a lot more doing that? You think it's just because of the risk and the what I mentioned earlier with just having you know stuff going on here or it's expensive for one it's it, it's not uh conducive to how somebody would normally live here you feel me like yeah you here you comfortable you can pay and you know have a nice house there is it's different like a lot of the stories that you hear is like couch surfing stories when you move out there and people don't really want to go through that not be it's not stability is not um, something that's guaranteed to you out there. Yeah. It it seems like that is, like, always one of the things is, like, you know, you hear that story, everybody moves out there, all grouped up in one little small apartment, yeah. staying on the couch or, you know, blow up mattress, whatever, and uh, grinding it out. Like, I heard a story about a dude that went out there, and he got stuck out there. Like, he can't get back home because he ain't got enough money. 
type shit. I mean, which it, is nuts. You know what I mean? And I think that scares a lot of motherfuckers from at least trying to make a move out there. Me, I'm I'm the type of dude that'll just go out there every so often and still make myself more available. I think that's the first step is yeah, making yeah. yourself more available. And you can do that now. That's the thing. Like, if you listen to every success story from a famous person, mm-hmm. like I think even Holly Berry, like they moved to L.A., was sleeping in their car, sleeping on the street or on somebody's couch. Like that's every famous person's story. At some point, they was homeless, and then they got discovered. But you, know, it don't really have to be like that no more. Today, you can get on social media. You can get noticed by somebody. They can. Fl- you can get flown out. You can make it so that you don't have to be in a difficult position while you're right. out there you can have it set up prehand. Mm-hmm. You, if you strategic like that me i just was wanted to just make the move like i said yeah. like you know just, but you I still just were strategic though like yeah you yeah, didn't yeah, make yeah. any stupid decisions you're not yeah, one definitely. to make dumb decisions you know what yeah, I mean? I you still had a car, no you shit. still had a you know a place to live you still had a job like you understood like you have to work to survive like you i got can't just you know what i mean support from uh warehouse man thank god for them man the whole warehouse be official if it wasn't for them i don't my la life could be different probably would have been different might have not been out there but them they really supported me because they was out there a couple years prior to me so they like really. They look out for everybody. Everybody that's up and coming. They like. They really look out. Yeah. So they're really genuine. Yeah. Super genuine. Super genuine people. They Ohio based. At Dayton, uh, like most of them from Dayton. They're like it's an Ohio based thing. But if you really look at it, they brought Playboy, Cardi, Post Malone to their first LA shows. Like back when they was unknown. Like Twenty One Savage. Mm. They like so they like where they at in the underground. Mm-hmm. They so entrenched, like they know, like what's next. Like a good percentage of last year's freshman list performed at Warehouse before, so whoever that they got booking and like they fucking with, you gonna see them later on. Like mm-hmm. so that so without them, like so they really looked out for me. So yeah, that's what's up, man. That's another thing. It's community. A community like luckily for me, my community I had already established it in Ohio, but like I said out there is. It's clicky. Is you gotta find your tribe, your like who you gonna be with, who you gonna feel me? Yo, if you fortunate enough to go out there with your day ones or do anything with your day ones, if you fortunate enough to have already be having money, yeah, like that's number one. If you already out here getting it, and you know, go out there and do what you do. It's your playground, but it's a million and one stories out there. You just gotta fit, pick a lane that work best for you. Okay. Well, you know, I appreciate all that kind of insight. It's it's good stuff to know. It's real. That's I mean, that's gold content, especially for artists here that are kind of working on what their next step is and even artists anywhere, you know, Mm -hmm. because, you know, Cincinnati, there's a million and one guys that are trying to do the same thing that you've done already, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think you're on a whole nother level, you know, and that's why I refer to you as a national recording artist. You know, you you're from here, you live in L.A., you make music, you record. It's on every major streaming platform. You know, right, you're right. a national recording artist for a group known as GK Fam. So, you know, that's it's just good stuff to know. It's good for cats that are maybe, you know just graduating high school that are thinking about music or that are in high school that are thinking about music you know what i mean you giving them good game that you've learned all the way up until this point and now they have it and that might make a huge difference for them you know they might make a break at 25 you know Mm -hmm. which is a good thing and that's why i appreciate you know you know just kind of filling it in but for anybody that's doing any kind of music this is good advice this is great advice um, actually, and and going to any major city, not only L.A., but, you know, New York or if you're in country going to Nashville, like I'm sure this is the same advice you would get going to any of those cities. So 100%. thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Um, but we're going to get into this uh, next topic, man. Um, I'm a, well, actually, the first official topic, you know, that, f- you know, what we just talked about was kind of like a little prelude to, you know, what we got going on. But uh, this is like our first official topic. And um, it's the uh, NFAC uh, 
and it's this it's this video I got, man, and they're called the NFAC. They're not the Black Panthers, and they're getting confused. Like, if you look on Twitter right now, and if you did earlier in the day and probably last night, and I don't know, but they were referring to them as the Black Panthers. But uh, this is it's a group of black men and... Uh, threat, counter threat. I'm gonna just I'm gonna let this video us. play real quick and then I'll kind of explain it. I ain't seen shit. What is your lot of fault? And all you scary ass Negroes that passed that shit around. Look at what the fuck you did. You made blacks come out. I don't see no white militia. So to the boogie boys, the three percenters, and all the rest of you scared ass rednecks, we here. Where the fuck you at? We in your house. Let's go. NFAC motherfucker. NFAC. NFAC. And the NFAC stands for Not Fucking Around Coalition. <laughs> if you didn't know, by the way. So, to the point. Basically, what happened was you had the KKK. Um, you had the KKK coming out and saying they were going to kill a whole bunch of black people on the 4th of July in Georgia, I believe. So, this group whatever you want to call them uh they riled up and they went to wherever this headquarters was and it was like all right we out here and i seen some dudes with some i seen i seen them marching somebody posted this is what georgia looks like right now yeah bro and they was all strapped well how how you feel about this climate that we in kind of right now uh i love it i love it this is what niggas needed to be on niggas needed to quit beating around the bush for a long time and by niggas i mean the whole country not just like niggas but like everybody needed to quit beating around the bush about a lot of shit and i like like energy like that is good it's not because it's a million different like when they say it's a whole bunch of ways to skin a cat like everybody want to be on a um Non-violent peaceful protests, like peaceful protests, are good. But when the niggas is talking about, oh, we about to kill a bunch of black people on July Fourth, and ain't shit wrong with niggas pulling up like that, responding like that. Yeah, that's how it should be responded to. Mm-hmm. You talking about threatening ours, and then we gonna come out like that. Like you said, what? That's how it should be done. And I feel like on every level, like even the. Like, if you look at the arguments between No Name and Jermaine, like, what's going on with the NBA, like, mm-hmm. between LeBron and Kyrie, like, all this, as long as it don't get too divisive, like, this discord is good. The way people start to think is good. It's, it's less, like, all flowers. Like, I feel like before this was just, like, more so about hashtags, but now people was, like, getting real serious. And yeah, then, man. I mean, motherfuckers out here with straps like yeah and we ain't talking about little handguns bro we talking about i mean i seen ars and ain't no telling what else people got just because they got it you know what i mean like you know but these is big boy guns this ain't no little ain't this ain't something you just go you know hitting something little like you taking down something pretty big with these kind of bullets so yeah white supremacy is pretty big oh yeah and i mean i feel them like i feel like People getting tired of seeing black person hung from a tree. Suicide. Nah. It's not a suicide. Yeah, black people don't hang themselves. They don't. Yeah. FYI, right. if you didn't know, they don't. That's not something that happens. It, it it just doesn't. And for the sake of the black like a black person that was mentally like ill and they decided to kill themselves, for the love of God, they wouldn't hang themselves from a tree because they wouldn't they wouldn't even put <laughs> black people and anybody else in that position to think about who did this they want to they want people to know that they killed themselves so they're not going to hang themselves from a tree because they know if they do that then they're going to say white people or someone racist did yeah that's what it looks like you know what i mean so obviously if you do get hung from a tree it probably is somebody racist like it's not that hard to comprehend this is easy stuff you guys like it's it's super easy so we, it's easy. I don't understand how people could be oblivious to that. Like people been getting hung from trees in this country for hundreds of years. So I don't. I don't know. You put two and two together. Yeah, you man. Tell me if you think that's a suicide. Yeah, I mean, have you seen? Uh, you seen? Uh, what's that? Watchmen. Have you watched that? I have not. You haven't. No. 
all right, I ain't going to ruin it for you, but, like, it's literally, I think it's in the first episode. Like, it's got something to do with someone hung from a tree. Like, it's nuts. Like, it's, I mean, but it's clearly, you don't just do that. It's, you know how hard it is to do that? I guess, I don't know, it's man. It's dangerous, man. Like, what what is going to happen when it comes back that, after they investigate that these are not suicides? I think they're going to try to cover them up. If that's the case, I if, think they will have to. I don't think. I think they already have. If you asking me, I mean, they already said they were suicide, so that's already covering it up as it is. So, but when they investigate, once the once the investigations, they got to get private investigators or FBI because local law enforcement can't be touching this shit no more. I think, personally, yeah, like I don't know that, that cover up shit. They tried to say uh, George Floyd died from coronavirus. Yeah, man. Said he tried. Said he overdosed and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm like, man, what don't y'all understand about being sat on, choked on for like eight minutes, bro? Like that, you're not gonna survive. You're not. You won't. Yeah, I just say that. Say they they gotta stop playing with us, man. Don't don't don't, don't do that, cause. Because they thought that the riots after, like, the Target shit, they thought that was bad. Like, they keep playing with us. It can get really bad. So what's the climate like in L.A.? Like, I know that those – were you out there when those protests started? No, nah, I was or, in Cincinnati. Or you were still here? Yeah. Okay. But you got friends out there and whatnot. Were they? Did yeah, they go heard, to any protests or anything like that? I heard that things were a lot more volatile than out here. And you can like see it on the internet. Like the cops was really on some bullshit. Out yeah, there. like they yeah, was yeah, running yeah, yeah. niggas over, for arrest, sure. arresting anybody for in, for breathing. Uh, yeah, I had a few homies go to some protests. Luckily, they all stayed safe. But like, they basically was telling me like I had some niggas that couldn't go because cause they can't they just can't get arrested right now. So yeah, so it's a little bit deeper than that. I yeah. feel it. Like. So yeah, no, nah, because that's that's how they they bringing people outside. You know what I mean? So I get it. I totally do. I totally do, man. So uh, you hear about what uh, Kanye said yesterday, or was it the day before? I did. He's so gonna he, run for president. He he um. trying to he trying to run for president of the United States, bro. How you feel? <laughs> I I don't believe it. For one, like my first thought when when I seen that was ain't it too late. Yeah, it's like, pretty you much can't too just, late. You can't just jump. November is only a few months away. You can't There's only a few in. states I think he still has a chance to do it in. But, I mean, he resides in California. I think he might still have time, maybe. But And then all he going to do, not that I give a fuck, but all he going to do is take votes away from Joe Biden and make it easier for Trump. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying from the jump. I said, I, said, I bet you Trump told Kanye to run. He's like. I'm I'm gonna put it out for y'all. He's probably like Kanye. You know what? It would be beautiful if you ran against me. Just imagine <laughs> the two of us running. And he probably That's just exactly he probably, how he's he probably he just zeroed out Joe Biden like not even speaking. He's like just me and you running. And he oh, said, if you win, man. you win. And then I bet you I bet you if Kanye won, he'd have him as his vice president. Remember that tweet Kanye put out a few years back where he said he was done with politics and he not talking about it no more, <laughs> like. Shit yeah, is stuck man. with that Cause they play They using you Kanye I don't know what, If you can't Yeah It's pro, It's so obvious Like I'm just like Bro do you not understand Like Oh my goodness Like it's a I don't know man I, I try to give him The benefit of the doubt I really do Even on his music And everything If I just disagree with it If I'm not feeling it I at least try to At least listen to it But he's just gotten To a point where I'm just like Bro I can't even do this anymore. I can't. He's just so much heart, man. I feel for yeah. He's just all heart. You know, like people like that. Like, yeah, and you, you right. gotta he have being, real niggas around. He you being used, man. Definitely. Niggas will manipulate you and and all type of shit. Yeah, man. Cause I mean, he's he's smart. He's making good money, man. He's making. He's an extremely wealthy, man. You would think. You know, you said he was in debt, but I'm pretty sure he's out of that debt now. He's Kanye West. Like he's. A walking gold mine, but yeah, man, in the wrong hands, that shit can be dangerous. Yeah, and I think that's someone figured that out, and now yeah. they're using that against everybody else, and that's why I'm like, please, man, because what's gonna happen is people gonna vote for him, 
Right. Because they're going to be like, what? We actually have they a chance. They're definitely going to vote for Kanye. They're going to just vote for him. A good percentage of the black voters is going to go to, to Kanye. And it's only going to give Trump his second turn. The thing that's going to happen is, is I don't want to say it's going to ruin them, but you know, everybody knows what happens when you get into politics and you start running for office. It gets ugly. It gets super ugly. You know what they're going to use against that man? Because they ain't going to have no choice at this point. Biden... It, Trump's not really gonna mess with it because he don't care. He wants he wants to stir this up. But you know what Joe Biden and them gonna have to do to him, <laughs> bro? They gonna they gonna crop that picture with him and that "Make America Great Again" hat on, bro, and they gonna destroy him. Like, and Kanye ain't not ready for that, and he don't need that. And that's the thing; he's it. mentally not ready for You're that. Not, nowhere near prepared for it. Your face is gonna be on our TV. They gonna ruin you, bro. They're gonna ruin you. They're, Talking about your wife, yeah, your wife, everything. They just did it to Trump. He just paid for sex. You don't think they're going to talk about your wife and what she did? You're crazy as hell if you don't think they're going to do that. you stupid if you don't think they're going to do that. Like I, After we, after most of us damn near forgot. Like, yeah, we, it's a setup. Don't even associate her this with is that a no setup, more. bro. This is literally a setup. It's a setup. And I don't like it. I don't want to see Ye go through that. No, I don't because I've already seen him go through that. I Multiple times. I know what happens. I don't want to see him go through that. And there's gonna be people to say, uh, I want, I want to, cause he puts out good ass music when he starts being on that shit. I, I, want, I want to see him do that. No, that's not at the cost of someone's mental health. It's not cool. No, hundred percent. I don't. Yeah. But that's why I just wish, like, hey, bro, just don't even do it, man. Don't. Who would be his vice president? I'm telling you, he probably got something worked out with Trump. Where if Trump loses, he's just gonna make him vice president. Why wouldn't he? Who who gonna run with him? Who's gonna run with him and and, and want to take Can that? Can you be the vice president after you already been the president? Yeah, I mean, because if he loses, he'll still have at least four years left. Mm. I mean, thinking about Joe Biden, he's been vice. He was vice president that whole time, even though he wasn't president. Yeah, I know you can you can president. move up. You can go from vice president mm-hmm. to president, but can you go from? Yeah, I, I don't think we ever had a. I think a it's former I, president be a vice president. I think it's still possible. I think I think even if he served eight years, he could still be vice president. But if something happened to the president, it would just overgo. It would overgo him, and he would still be vice president. But someone else would have to be president. I believe that's how it would work. But it's a dirty game, Kanye. You above this? Don't do it. Don't get in that arena with yeah, politics. Them is, dirty people. Yeah, man. Be careful because uh, they don't play fair in politics, bro. I'm telling you right. Motherfucking now They don't Yeah he And <laughs> Joe Biden Ain't gonna play fair Bro I'm telling you bro You better be safe You better be careful You know But just realize If you really really Start putting money Into a campaign Then you gotta be careful Because of how you Move your money around You gotta be very careful Because if you do anything The wrong way And you pull funds From something to In your campaign Or you pull money From your campaign To fund something You'll go to Federal prison Mm. Look at uh, didn't that just happen with uh? That's how they were trying to get uh Joe Exotic. Remember when he was trying to run for office? He was pulling funds from from the campaign into this tiger industry, yeah. and from the tiger industry into the can. It was all mixed in there. They was looking at him for a long time. So Kanye West, I'm sure he has the right people around him. He's not Joe Exotic, so I don't have to worry about that. But I'm just saying, be careful because there's those types of snakes in the grass for sure. That want to use him for that. You have to be very careful. He's tied into what Adidas and everything else. You know, a lot yeah. a lot happens once you become president or you start running for president, you know? So a whole lot. So hey man, just please, please be careful. Please be careful. But uh I'ma get into this next uh this this uh this this next segment and I think uh it's been going around for like a I don't know. It's been going around for a while, but it hasn't been going around like too major until maybe about a week ago. And uh it's the it's the Glizzy gang, bro. But what we had yesterday bro. was the, was the Glizzy Gladiator. And uh Bro, <laughs> serious question, serious question. When when did niggas start liking hot dogs this much? I don't know. I don't know nobody over the age of 10 that got excited about a hot dog. Like, when you go to a cookout, <laughs> is you going for the hot dog first? No, like, this is... I was definitely grabbing a hot dog. 
But then when I think about it, like I can't even be on that because I'm from Cincinnati. Yeah, we, we got conies, bro. We, like so we I, literally so yeah. are glizzied out. We, we are lizard. I'm at this point. I'm being a hypocrite because we we do do the glizzies. So in a major way, so like. you know you had the 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 hot dog eating contest yesterday, uh, but it kind of coincides with what we talking about, and I just. I kind of understand what's going on, but I kind of don't at the same time. And it's getting so wild, bro. Like, it's to the point where I'm like, uh, what? And it's all these pictures, like Glizzy Gate. And it got all these pictures of, like, it got Barack Obama. And it's like, damn. What do people from D.C. think about this? I don't know. Because Glizzy, Glizzy is that's, uh, that's a shot. Slang, that's slang for a Glock, Yeah, if I'm, I'm correct. And, so, and then it became slang for a hot dog. And then it well it was what's the name's name before that? Shy Glizzy, yeah, yeah he, he from, from DC. DC, yeah, and, you know. But that's that's like gun talk, you feel me? That's yeah, something completely different. Yeah, I want to know how it became <laughs> slave for a hot dog, and why is everybody so obsessed with it? Yeah, to the point that on on the hot dog eating contest, you could play the video, Jalen. They call this man the Glizzy Gladiator. Bro, this shit is. Bro, this shit is disgusting. First off, <laughs> that shit is disgusting. And you know, the last time we cared about a hot dog eating contest, remember the Japanese nigga? Yeah, that was that was the last time. That was like damn near twenty years ago. Did he retire? They said bro had two stomachs. They called him the Glizzy Gladiator, bro. This shit is everywhere. I'm sorry. It's because we don't have sports. <laughs> and niggas, like, niggas need to champion something. And this is what niggas chose. I'm disappointed. You see how they were doing it, though? You know, usually it's like at Coney Island, like outside on a whole thing. And it's hella people there. They got like... Uh, they got like the plexiglass in between each person and they eating that shit. That's bro, nuts, bro. This nigga stuffing <laughs> glizzies down his throat. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, like, I, I would be all right if I never, oh if I never saw God. this. <laughs> this is why I don't celebrate 4th of July and shit like this. I'm not proud to be a man. Because cause niggas is slamming glizzies. <laughs> My nigga slammed 75 glizzies like it was Come none. On, and he said he could have did more. And it's a new record. He could have fed a small army. Bro, he could have fed the block. He could have fed the block. How do you eat that much? How do you eat that much? You have to. Bro, there's no way. Like, let me get 75 hot dogs and stack Can them. anybody there really, like, plus they were they using bread? It? Can somebody confirm that he ate 75 hot dogs? They, yeah, they had it. They usually have someone. They got people, like, in front of them counting and watching. Like, you can usually go to the event, but because of coronavirus, you can't. But, yeah, bro, they're eating these. But you tell me how you eat all those hot dogs. And they be eating the buns, too. And he drinking, like, water and dumping it. Like, bro, what are y'all doing? Why didn't somebody stop him? It's a, <laughs> that's a, it's, it's He's been, been doing phrase. this shit for years, bro. They say he's he American train. hero, I he bro. For, I don't know. He do, bro. He just be eating, and I'm like, bro, I don't, like, I get it, but I don't get it when you're eating that many. <laughs> I don't. Like, eat 13. I'm like, oh, yeah, you you lie, bro. You ate more than everybody here. Hey, he ate 75. Hey, yo, my nigga, relax. You can have an eating contest with so many other foods. You can have a pie eating contest. Bro, like, remember... You remember how here in Cincinnati, like, what what was it, like, Channel 5 for the Friday Night Lights football games? They yeah. did the uh, Skyline Chili eating contest. But you were only eating one Coney, bro. And it was just, like, you and one other person. And y'all just tried to eat the Coney the fastest. It wasn't 75 glizzies, bro. <laughs> what? Wait, what city was that in? Uh, that this happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Coney Island in New York? Oh, that was in New York? Yeah, that's where it happens every year, the hot dog eating contest. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes sense. New York. Is- Coney Island. You know? Niggas gonna show their ass. And, and they try to, you know, they try to argue that we came up with the term Coney for our shit here in Cincinnati from Coney Island in New York. When in reality, 
we came up with the Coney Island because of the Coney Island here that we had. Because mm. that Coney Island's been here since. Was ours before theirs? Before they Coney Island? I'm not sure. Now, you could argue that we stole they we stole Coney Island, the name from them, but we didn't get Coney Island, that, that name from them. We got it from mm. our shit. I've never been to Coney Island before. It's cool. Is it? Am I missing anything? No, you really gonna literally walk around and then leave probably. It's okay. It's cool. Where I is mean, Coney Island even at? Uh, what is that? Kellogg Avenue. Am I? Uh, what's the down there on Kellogg Avenue? Right. Yeah. It's weird how they have it set up, man. You've you've been. I've never. I'm because you've been the river. Uh, what's that? Riverfront. What River is in Bend? Coney Island? Is it it's like an amusement park? It's an amusement park. Yeah, man, King I, man, Kings Island is stumping on that shit because I ain't. I don't remember nobody bragging. Because it's farther. It's farther to drive farther. to. Yeah, because think about what is that River Bend? What do you know what that is, Jalen? Riverfront. What is that called? Is that River Bend? Riverfront? Is it River Bend or Riverfront? I think it's River Bend. River Bend, right? Yeah. But that's just downtown, ain't it? It's Riverbend. No, you know how you get to River Riverbend's literally like it's it's next door to Coney Island, ain't it? Like because you know how you got to go into Riverbend, you go over, you go into Kentucky, and then you kind of come back. Yeah, that's literally kind of where Coney Island is. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's all right there. You've probably parked in the Coney Island parking lot and walked to. I feel like it's all right next door, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken, it's weird. It's some, uh, it's some definitely, uh, interesting stuff, but yeah, bro, this glizzy shit is wild and it is taking over everything I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure here in the next month or so, I'm going to go to the the grocery store and get hot dogs and it's going to say glizzies. Oh yeah, I'm wait. I'm waiting for. The, I'm damn near about to go <laughs> copyright glizzies after this podcast is over and start selling. Who is going to capitalize off that shit first? If I'm Shy Glizzy or anybody from D.C., I'm pissed off right now because I would be, I'd be glizzy the fuck out right now. Glizzy apparel. I'm talking about. I've seen glizzy pictures of Trump, Biden, Obama. Everybody you can think of, I've seen a glizzy in they in their hand or they, in their mouth. If that, I think that sounds a little bit better than a hot dog, though. It sound way better. That's the problem. We hey, give me three black glizzies. Black people can make nigga. anything that's, cool. Yeah, that's live. But it's the shit we choose to make cool. That... And that's the thing. You know who did this shit? I don't <laughs> think it was. I don't think it was one of ours that did this shit. I don't. Yeah, it's a <laughs> maybe, movie. maybe not. I don't know. But maybe he's like, "What did you call that? A glizzy?" <laughs> hey, give me one of those glizzies. Hot dogs came up. I remember hot dogs. Every time my mom used to, uh, my dad used to grill out, motherfucking hot dogs would be there days after all the hamburgers and ribs. <laughs> nobody thinking about no fucking hot dogs. Who's your, what, so when y'all grill hot dogs, did they have to be burnt? Were you a burnt kind of hot dog guy? Yeah, they got to be burnt. Like stupid burnt? Talking about like black, looking like this shit. Black glizzies. The black glizzies, all black chromed out glizzy. Yeah, nigga, that's what I'm all about. Hell yeah. Okay, all right. Well, it's, you know, I thought I'd just throw that out there because it's just nuts that, like, it really took over yesterday and the day before. I'm talking about, like, that glizzy shit went nuts to the point where I was like, wait a minute. I had to stop my day. And I'm like, what is going on with these glizzies, bro? It's a whole glizzy gate. Crazy. <laughs> Don't make no sense. But, uh, hey, yo, Jalen, let's start our uh, our next. Uh, let, let's let's play a game with Peso real quick. We're uh, we going to play this or that because he's from a. Uh, He's got the opportunity of, you know, being here in, in L.A. and, you know, a couple of things. So we're, uh, we'll are we start out, um, which one you want to start? Let's we'll start with, uh, let's start with, let's, let's do In-N-Out or Steak and Shake. Is this a serious question? Dog, give me Steak and Shake. In-N-Out sucks. You don't like In-N-Out? I've never had it, but I just like people. People. You like, want to know something about In and Out? What's they up? They support Trump. So. Well. I don't so, eat it anyway. Sorry, I had to uh, bust y'all bubble like that. Before I knew that, I didn't fuck with y'all, but 
Now I'm putting y'all business out there. All right, well. Steak and Shake. They officially ain't letting you inside their facility. I'm ever. opening up a Steak and Shake. Where in LA? Would you do them like that? Would you, you think you would? You think that? I, I bet you that shit would go crazy out Is there. Is Steak and Shake done completely or just only in Ohio? I don't know. Oh, Cincinnati. I think they trying. I know to, they had a Steak and Shake in LA. They trying to get people to like put money into it and a franchise one, but it just seems like a lot of money you could put it. You got to put into it. I'm a loyal nigga, man. Steak and Shake. Oh I yeah. Was raised off that. Yeah, man. It hurts that I can't have them shakes, man. That shit hurt my heart, the bro. The shakes, bro, it's the best the best shakes in the world. And they had every type of shake you want. Literally. Like, and they were getting more creative as the years went on. Like, to the point where, you know, some places did sh- shakes and they just threw anything in there and called it whatever it was. Yeah. Nah, they was really, that shit was really tasting like that. Like, I remember they had the birthday cake shake, bro. That shit was fucking bananas. Not even not bananas, but you get it, like, bro. <laughs> that shit was. They was doing their thing with the shakes. Very oh. berry strawberry. There was actual strawberries in this strawberry milkshake. Like, yo, good. But I've never had In and Out, so I don't know. But it's I hear it's very. I don't. Is it similar? Like, it's is it uh, the same burger style? No. No. It's. Or is that Smash Burger? In and Out is. They all predicated off their animal style shit. So it's like they just throw a bunch of sloppy ass Thousand Island on, on the yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't fuck with that on shit. They on they fries or they burgers. No, nah, I don't do all that shit, bro. And I don't, I don't get the hype. I don't. When I know places like Steak and Shake exist, and I go eating in and out, and I hear niggas on that hype beat shit with it, I don't let it ride. I don't let it slide. So Hell fuck yeah. in and out. Hell yeah, man. Okay, okay. What else? They ain't never done. Me? I don't want to say fuck in and out. They ain't never done nothing. <laughs> Nothing bad to me. Nah, dude. fuck that. They, they support Trump. Trump. Fuck all that bullshit, bro. Nah, them Trump. niggas gotta go. They gotta go. They gotta go. So don't go that to In and Out no more. No, this ain't my game. Y'all choose. <laughs> <laughs> Stay and shake In and Out. <laughs> let, let y'all pick that one. As long as, well, I damn sure know that Stay and Shake ain't donating no damn money to nobody because they ain't got no damn <laughs> <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga is struggling right now, so you ain't even got to worry about it. So if you do see a steak and shake, you need to donate money to them motherfuckers, exactly. bro. So, all right, steak and shake for president. Oh shit. Okay. All right. Next one, man. I got uh, what you want? Corona or dos keys? <sighs> Fuck beer, man. Fuck beer. Yeah, I just aren't you a beer guy? No, I have a beer belly, but. I don't. I really hate beer for the reason that I have a beer belly. Like, I'd rather just drink some alcohol or some wine or some liquor or some wine. Or oh, you feel me? Or I'd rather have a white claw than a beer. To be honest with you, I don't a white give claw, a, bro. I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I would rather drink one of the like a seltzer than than the fucking beer because beer is just like. But but if I gotta drink something, you know, I got. I'm an alcoholic. That shit running my so, family. So. But if you had to but choose, but has got better commercials though. So I would go. <laughs> I hate Corona commercials so bad. They so gay. Cause they I mean, just, they so they the bad. same. So, all right. But so, I've drunk more Coronas in my lifetime than Dos Equis. So, so, so wait a minute. So, all right. If you had to choose, so what are you a dark or light? A liquor? Yeah. Dark? Nah. It depends, man. It depends. So if you're recording, what is it? I would go with dark. If you partying, I would go with tequila. Okay. See, you see how I should be like a psychiatrist or something. I know how to talk to people, man. Y'all understand me, man. This is you just gotta you gotta know how to speak. All right. So all right, let's go on our next one since you don't want to fuck with beer no more. Yeah, uh, beer. So what? Uh, what's up? Beat ups or wing stop? Mmm. Unpopular opinion time I don't care <laughs> Cause like I said I'm loyal bro B-dubs raised us man Wingstop is new here They new to the block Tuesdays, I can't even I can't even bro, It ain't even Tuesdays. the same Tuesdays no more bro Tuesdays growing up Think about how they did Come niggas on, Think about how they treated on, us man. From that whole time They just raised the price It just went up and up and up Every year on Tuesday they What did. happened We was loyal to them They didn't stay loyal to us Yeah bro And you remember what happened there Didn't something happen At the one in, in Forest Park Where they was like Super racist yeah, Or something yeah. like that A whole bunch of bad shit Happened up at that one I mean you try to turn your back 
You try to turn your back on niggas, you gonna get what you got coming to you. Oh so yeah, and it shout did. out to Wingstop. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm a Wingstop dude right now. Right now, def- right now. Back in the day obvious, though, because cause them wings have changed at B Dubs, bro. They're they, not the same. They're not. They're not the it's, same, bro. They went corporate on niggas. Yeah, bro. At like, some point. Back in the day, maybe early high school years, like maybe 08, 09, probably earlier than that, the yeah. wings were definitely different. You know what yeah. I mean? I say the same thing about pizza, bro. In the 90s, pizza tasted totally different. It tasted way better than what it tastes now. Think about it. 90s pizza tasted way better than how the pizza tastes right now, bro. I don't, you can get it, and just think is about it because you was just a kid. No, it's like no, no, nope. pizza was no nope. magnificent. Nah, <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm not agreeing <laughs> to that because I've asked this question to not only people my age, but I've asked it to people that are older, and they agreed. They said, "Yeah," and just think about it like the Chuck E. Cheese pizza back in the day, or maybe the Little Caesars back in the day. The pizza was way better. Now it's different. You know, you get the five dollar joints. That's it. Back in the day, bro, at them joints, bro, in the 90s, they was really, really doing that. They was doing it a little bit differently. They was putting more time into it. The only pizza I a little really bit remember better. eating from the 90s is La Rosa's. I'm not going to lie. La Rosa's. Yeah, you know, we're, I can't we're remember. Cincinnati people. I might have had. That's the only pizza I can remember. I know I had other pizza, but I can't You never went into, remember. like, the Kmart and got the, the Caesars? Nah. You never did that? I didn't start eating Little Caesars until... Like, like it was $5. Yeah, till I, till I was <laughs> well, like you broke and I need something to eat. God damn, bro. Well, I guess didn't what? grow up on Little Caesars. Guess what? You missed out. Because back in the day, bro, when they really cared about quality, shit was fire. that shit was good as hell, man. And there was a few places that was like that. Like, I just wish I could go back to the 90s and go to New York and have pizza. I'm telling you, it's just different. The way this shit used to look in the movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... Just think about that, or like, what what movie was that? The Ninja Turtles when they was uh doing the pizza and everything. That pizza yeah. was different, bro. <laughs> that you can't find that pizza now. I guarantee you. <laughs> I, I guarantee you. I, I guarantee it, bro. I guarantee it. I'm telling you, I'm on to something with that, and I'm gonna keep poking at that shit like every other week with this pizza shit in the '90s. It's a, it's gonna be another. That's worth an investigation. It is. That's the real Pizza Gate. I don't know what other Pizza Gate them motherfuckers be talking about with that other weird shit. I'm not on that right now. I'm on to some real shit with finding out what happened in the '90s with this pizza from 1999 to 2000. Because a whole lot of weird shit started happening in 2000. If you want to ask me, including bad hip hop music. It got real bad in the early 2000s, my nigga. Yeesh, that was man. You feel me? Something happened, bro. Something happened to pizza and rap music. Well, yeah. I don't know how those coincide, but they do. A good 9-11 is a good turning point for all that shit. Yeah, they say at one point, I don't know if it was like 2012 or 2013. Maybe this is why I can't remember. But they said whenever we changed into the new year, we got pushed into a whole different dimension. You can look it up. I, I promise you. This And this is like out of all the crazy theories that like people talk about, this is the one I'm like, okay. Because if you think about it, you can't really remember what happened to the year prior. It's a weird time. I can't remember the exact year, but if anybody in the chat or anything that's watching know what I'm talking about, speak up. Was it 2012, the year that we were supposed to? It was something like that, bro. I don't know. It was it was some wild shit. But I started thinking about it like, damn, that kind of makes sense. I don't know. I heard something like that before. I can't remember exactly. It's like when they tell you to think about it, like think about something, you can't really you can't really see it. Yeah. Like, but you know it's there. You've seen it before, but you haven't. And the Bernstein bear shit. Yeah, isn't that is what's that the Mandela is that the Mandela effect? Is that what that is? I think so. Yeah. I think that's part of it though. I think like the one with Sinbad and yeah, remember they Sinbad did that. Movie? What, what was that? Shazam or something yeah. like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all can't convince me that shit didn't exist because someone ended up finding the box <laughs> of that movie. It was like, see, I tried to tell y'all niggas. Oh my god, I wish I could find that. I gotta find that movie. Jalen, look it up. Stop everything you're doing. We need to look get up, into this. Look up that Shazam movie because it's a movie and it's not the one with Shaq, bro. It's the one way. This is this is a uh, bad, bro. A new a whole new podcast within itself that we need to 
Start. Yeah, bro. On Mandela effect theories that I could really prove that really happened. I'm telling you, rap music, rap music, pizza, 2000 and we'll say 14, and this Shazam movie. Question just text me, uh, Queen City's pizza. And the fact that he would text me that, because that shit used to be like right down the street from where I live. We used to both go to school in Midway, so we was living on the west side and. I do remember that pizza. That shit was greasy and milky. Shout out Quest for texting me that. I know I he told watching. You. Shout okay, out. Okay, I told you. You see how I'm making sense now? Yeah. And I'm not just bullshitting with you, my nigga. This is real shit. There's hella different pizza spots that was in the 90s. Yeah. It's Kazam, not Shazam. But it was real though, right? I know it's not Shazam, but is it? Kazam was with Shaq. That happened. We yeah. Know, we know for a fact. Yeah, that one happened. I watched that one, but... No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know that. No, Shazam, the one, the Shazam one. nigga, with Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of me thought that it, it was just some shit that like so, seemed like it would have happened oh, in the nineties because it was I'm so nineties. I'm gonna find it. Hold on, because like that seemed like some shit that would have happened, so you could just sneak it in history. Yeah, bro, I know it happened, bro. Here, Jalen, I got a whole link. Copy this, and I'm gonna post it in here for you. Look at this, y'all. He said this shit ain't real. <laughs> 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 no, nah, look at this, bro. Look at this. It's it's it, it, at least I could show you like what I'm talking about. They're saying it isn't real. I'm trying to find like where this picture is. It's Sinbad's genie movie, and you guys know he had one. And I shouldn't have to like go all out and do all this. You guys should just agree with what I gotta say. But it did happen. I don't remember when it happened, but it did happen. And there's nothing that y'all going to be able to tell me that ain't going to sway me in any other kind of direction. Because I know for a fact that happened. Again, this is worth investigation. I, we need to I would, like, get into these, these I should have saved that picture, bro. Someone had a picture of the actual... Bro, they had the VHS. So, and someone posted, like, after all this was going around, it was like, it does exist. I have the VHS, bro. They had the VHS and everything. I know what happened. Y'all can say whatever y'all want. Y'all can say Mandela Effect, whatever y'all want. But I know for a fact that I saw that movie. And I know for a bigger fact that I saw that movie in the movie theaters. And I know for a bigger fact that I saw it at Force Fair. <laughs> so what do y'all really want to do? I a know lot exactly. of, A lot of people say that. And I'm not going to be the, the person that just <laughs> deny that many people's feeling. It's got to be something to it. We might be in a different dimension right now. I told you, niggas. I told you, niggas. I told y'all. Is that is this it, bro? I told y'all. I got it. See, Ayo, have you ever watched? uh, Before you play it, have you ever watched uh, the OA on Netflix? No. Watch that, cause that's about dimensions, bro. That shit's real, my nigga. That shit is real. I wouldn't doubt it. Bro, and they said every they said in every human like being in their body, like right in the middle, right? They said that they have a seed, bro. It's a seed, and it's a seed to the whole fucking universe. Mm-hmm. And what this dude did was he he pretty much and spoiler alert, if you wanna mute me, mute me for thirty seconds. But what happened was he he uh he took the seed and he planted that shit, but the they, the body had to be dead. So he put the body in water and this started growing like a whole garden of just beautiful flowers. And he ate a part of a flower to get to another dimension, like doing some wild, like fifth movement shit. Like it's some real shit to get into. It's about angels and everything. The original angel. It's pretty good. Can we, let's take the seed out of Jalen's brain. <laughs> and go to different dimensions. This is scary. Yeah, this ain't the sh- this ain't the movie that I saw in the movie theater. It's always something so creepy to me about like '90s video footage. All right, cut this bullshit off. This isn't what I saw. <laughs> I don't think, unless it's uh, Sinbad as a genie. <laughs> For, hold on, full screen that. 